I'm a captain on a 737. Awesome. And I don't think you went straight there after graduation. No. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. You wish. But it'd be we a lot easier. Wish, right? Everybody <laughs> wish. Yeah. Okay. So tell us about that path after graduating. What all did you do? Okay. Um, so after graduation, um, I went back to Lamar's, Iowa, which is where I grew up because I didn't have a job flight instructing and I worked at McDonald's so um, <laughs> <laughs> something for you guys to strive for um, and then after that I was able to get a position within a couple months in Beaumont Texas as a flight instructor okay and I flight instructed there slash drove tractor to mow lawn uh, for about two and a half years basically okay. you know Cessna's that kind of thing we did Christmas flights um, showing the lights around and stuff, but then um, got hired by Great Lakes Aviation, which is no longer in business, flying um, Beach 1900s. And before I gave up all my students and all my um, my apartment, they called and moved the date back for my start date for Great Lakes. So I moved my mattress and some boxes into a closet at the FBO and lived there. Not one month, but two months. So lots for you to look forward to. Live in the closet. Yes. At the FBO. <laughs> at the FBO. They did have showers and I had to leave because you know, you've got your, your airport, what well, we call them airport rats, um, that you know, hung around a lot. And so you kind of had to leave so that you could come back and then go to bed. But um, so I did that for two months and then got hired by Great Lakes. And while I was in ground school, the FAA shut them down for maintenance issues. So then I went and packed ice cream for a couple months, getting up at 2.30 in the morning to pack ice cream at the Wells Blue Bunny. And uh, I swore I would never complain about getting up early to go fly an airplane. <laughs> and I haven't, and I haven't. Um, so Great Lakes got back up on their feet, so I uh, was able to fly for them, and that was a little over two and a half years there too. Upgraded really quick, um, like a seven month period. We had a lot of people leave. So that was a, a nice acceleration to the career right there. And then I hopped over to US Airways um, mainline and I flew the DC-9 and the 737, 300 and 400 for them. 9-11 uh, hit and so I lost my job. I was furloughed again. And so uh, I went back to Lamar's, Iowa um, and hung out there for a couple months while I was putting out my resumes and ended up at PSA, US Airways Express, and I flew the Dornier for them for about nine months. Um, the only two major airlines that were hiring at the time were Southwest and Alaska. And so um, literally every month, I would, every Wednesday, I would call Alaska and say, hey, <laughs> do you remember me? And so after nine months, I got hired by Alaska, and uh, I've been there for 18 years. Okay. <laughs> so nine months after 9-11. So I yeah, it, so it was there was 2002? about... So I got hired in like 2003. 2003. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's quite a path that you took. A little bit, yeah. A lot of character building. I'm yeah. done. Done with character building. <laughs> I wish. We always think we're done with character building until God has something else. <laughs> so don't say that too loud, right? I know, right? <laughs> um, I'm joking. Yeah. So getting up early in the morning, I'm just curious, the 2.30 in the morning, the uh, Wells Blue Bunny, what's the earliest you've had to like typically go out for, what's your earliest call time that you get at Alaska? Say now. Well, so... If I'm on, so I'm based in Seattle, so I'm Pacific Standard Time. Okay. So if I'm doing a Newark departure, actually we had a Baltimore departure at 6 a.m. Okay. So 543, the van's at 2, so I'm up at 1 a.m. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. So these students have nothing to complain about with my 7 a.m. class. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Okay. No. Good. That's sleeping in. Let, let's, let's give them a shirt. Do it. Should we give them a shirt for, for sleeping in? Let's see. It did not get anywhere. <laughs> that was no good. Oh, you get to do the next Yay! one. Yay! Mr. Anderson. Okay. <laughs> Here, you try one of the embroidered ones. Okay, this is a small. So oh, this is a small. This needs to go to a girl. Oh, there's some girls over there Where? in the back. Here, right here. <laughs>
There we okay. go. <laughs> Softball's coming back. Okay, that's good. Okay, so education-wise, Sounds like, so when you left Laterno, you had your flight instructor certificate. Did you get that through Laterno? Mm -hmm. Okay. The so only thing I didn't get here was my MEI. MEI okay, okay, okay. So you got mm -hmm. your CFI and your in instrument instructor mm -hmm. at Laterno. Tell us about how Ed Laterno's education prepared you for what you did after graduation. So um, when I came to Laterno, I, I didn't know anything about aviation. I'd never, honestly, I'd never been in an airplane, um, which is a whole other story. But... Um, I thought I was coming here to be a missionary pilot. I quickly found out that that was not my calling. Um, for one, I think it was one of them, JARS or MAF, JARS, I think, wasn't even accepting females at that time, and culturally and stuff like that. And, and it just wasn't for me. I mean, I struggled so much through my AMP. It, it, it was not a good fit. But one thing Laterno taught me was that your mission field is wherever you're at. Um, mine's at 35,000 feet in 737. It's at the gate when I'm talking to my passengers or the ramp or the gate agent, whatever it is. And so um, it opened my, opened my world to like, I didn't have to go to West Africa. You know, it's, it's where you're at and what you're doing and who you're with. Uh, that was my big like eye-opening moment. But Laterno itself, um, when I think about what Laterno gave me. The big word that I get in my head is a professional. I was taught to be on time. And, and I, first of all, I need to tell you, I'm practical. I'm not, I'm not this ooby gooby girl and rainbows and, you know, butterflies. I was taught to be on time. At, at the time when I went to school, if we didn't go to class, and Fred, you can correct me, I think we were deducted a grade point. Um, and so we were on time. And even like today, I was in the parking lot at 10. <laughs> and they wanted me here at 10.15. It's in bread. Um, we, I think you guys have certain attire you have to wear. At the time, we had to wear like dress pants. And um, to this day, I go to the, I, if I go into a check ride, I'm wearing something like this. I'm putting on something that is gonna make me feel more professional. And when I put on my uniform, it's like my, my armor in a way. I'm a different person when I put on those four bars. I have a responsibility that is unbelievable than if I, have that, if I don't have that uniform on, you know? Not that I'm not fun in uniform, but I'm not as fun, let's just be honest. <laughs> um, I've been thinking of a lot of things. There's a lot more going on in my brain. So um, Laterno taught me professionalism in my entire being on time. Um, Obviously, stick and rudder. I remember Gordon Moore going, you're three degrees off your heading. Why are you okay with that? Don't be okay with it. The guy sitting next to you doesn't want you to be okay with it, and you shouldn't be okay with it. Be on your heading, be on your altitude. Um, your instructors put so much time and information and knowledge into you. Um, I was uh, trying to figure out a VOR could not understand anything. And I want to say it was Bruce Chase, I'm not sure. But somebody went out in the parking lot and drew a VOR for me so that I could stand on the 080 degree radial, or the 090 degree radial, and figure out that I'm, my heading is actually 270. But I'm on the 090 degree radial. And if I turn outbound, I'm heading, because I couldn't visualize it. These instructors put that knowledge, took that time, um, and, and went above and beyond to teach the knowledge. Um, integrity in our job is your passengers will know that you're lying the minute it comes out of your mouth. Don't lie to them, just tell them the truth. Also, the people you work with, they want integrity. They want, you to, they want to know that you're going to do what you're going to say you're going to do. Um, I wrote a few things down because I think uh, this question is so important. Um, teamwork, as a, no matter what, if you're a flight instructor and your, your team is the, the guy fueling your truck, or the FBO owner, uh, your student, that's your team. You're gonna build your team. 
if you're in the commuters or in, um, within a, a major airline, my team are same thing. I've got the flight attendants, I've got the first officer, the rampers. You're building your team. I know you guys have a couple teams here, um, probably leaders of those teams. You're gonna be the leader, the leader. Everybody looks to you on decisions with that, with that airplane. You may not see it now, but Letourneau, your instructors, are preparing you for that in, in so many different ways that I, when they told me about this question and I was like, oh my goodness, they were preparing me and I had no idea. And that was, I figured, I just noticed that now. Um, so all those little things that they have you do and things and you're like, what in the world? There's a reason for it. And you're gonna end up being a better pilot and somebody's gonna wanna fly with you because you're a professional. That's a really long answer to that question, but I, I really think it's important that you guys that realize how special of an education you're getting at Laterno. And most importantly, there's probably not a school out there that your instructors aren't praying for, that are praying for them. And I, I know you guys are praying for your students. And that above all, I mean, hands down, done. <laughs> wow. Oh, I don't know where we're getting that noise from, but we're not moving around, so we just stay right here. Okay. Well, that is that is, that is fantastic. So now we'll go into another question that might have a long answer, or might have a short answer. Um, as a female pilot, what have been some interesting challenges that you've had, or maybe it's you haven't had any? Then that would be a short answer. <laughs> yeah, this is a long answer. Oh, this is a long answer. Okay. <laughs> so, in preparation for this, I, I actually did ask um, some fellow graduates of Laterno and also some people that I work with and just was like, you know, because people have different challenges, you know. Uh, what I found out is we all have basically the same challenges. <laughs> um, for instance, the uniform are cut for men. I mean, just basic things. Um, Recently, we had a transition jacket, and I'm like, where's the women's? There wasn't one. Um, women, have you tried to wear a jacket, a men's jacket? Doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. So um, they just made a new uniform for Alaska, and they expected the female pilots to wear heels. Oh. What? <laughs> I'm not sure if you saw the name. It's Alaska. <laughs> We're like icing, wow. de-icing, you know. You're it, walking it, around the ramp. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, okay. yeah. So, I mean, just basic things like that. Um, one of the gals said, and this is true, is that, like, for her to put the standby, the covers on the standby, she has to stand on the chalks because she's too short. We have a HUD, and the seat doesn't go up high enough for some of the the oh, the heads-up display. Heads-up display. Should, yeah, explain one there. Yeah, the heads-up display that um, basically puts everything right up in front of you. But your seat has to be at a certain spot or you can't see. And so, um, like the heads-up display is, you have to put your chair up so high that it messes up your, your, your viewpoint when you're landing. Um, one thing that pretty much every, every person said was, Whatever situation you're going into, you have to fly better and you have to have more knowledge. And you have to prove yourself going into every situation. Um, especially as a first officer, uh, I think the female pilots, because of the captain um, feeling they have to prove themselves, I know I did. With that said though, once you are accepted, and you prove yourself, you're accepted, you're in. And, um, but there is that, and I'm, and I'm sure guys have that too, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's part of, part of that too, but um, definitely that is something that we all deal with. Also, you're always the, it's getting better, but you know, you're the only one in the crew room, the only female in the crew room. Um, and I say that in a kind of like, I almost don't wanna say it because as a woman, as a female pilot, I chose to be it, right? I saw, I came to Laterno, it was seven to one ratio at the time. I chose that. I chose to be the only girl in class. I chose, actually I had one other gal. Um, but, you know, I, I chose to be the only person in the crew room. And, and Laura, we've talked about this before, and that 
Um, I, I, don't, I don't like female pilots to be like, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you chose it. So, <laughs> you know, you gotta take some of the responsibility. Um, of course, there's the, the family issues of being away or breastfeeding on the road, um, to be totally honest with you. Um, and then, to be blunt, um, I, I have two positions that I did not get because I was a woman. I ended up flying for one of those. <laughs> they wouldn't hire me as a mechanic uh, to get an internship, but uh, I did go fly for them um, later on. So um, I was told women don't take instruction very well. I was also told that women could not fly their way out of a brown paper bag. <laughs> With that, I turned off the flight director. We were flying from Fairbanks to Anchorage. I remember this like it was yesterday. And I'm like, I'm gonna fly the best ILS into Anchorage. Squeaked it on. We got to the gate. I turned to him and I said, not too bad for a brown paper bag over my head. <laughs> That's supposed to be funny. <laughs> what did he say? He was not quiet. Much. He was quiet right. after that. Not much. But you know, yeah. you, you do have to stand up for yourself a little bit. So. Um, yeah, uh, the, the other thing that came up, which I think is interesting and something I, I don't, the older female pilots, I notice we bring our octave down a little bit on the radio and I think the younger gals are not doing that. Can I be honest? Nobody wants to hear it. it you, sometimes you hear those voices on the radio and they are squeaky and high and just bring it down an octave. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, we all hear it. So I, maybe I should have done that in closed doors, but. Um, <laughs> I have a low voice, it's okay. Yeah, I know, I do too, and so, uh, but even that, I bring it down, yeah. you know. But I've um, still been called sir on the radio, and then someone's like, oh, I meant ma'am, or something. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, I'm not that low. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, exactly, totally. <laughs> but anyway, um, I don't know, did I miss anything? No, that's good, that's good. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was flying with the guy at Dynamic once, and finished flying with him after our first flight together, and he said, you, you actually fly good. The last two women I've ever flown with were terrible. So I was kind of surprised. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> is that yeah. a compliment? <laughs> or what is that? <laughs> well, and the thing of it is, is there's, it, you know, it's, it's not if you're a male or a female or you're a pilot, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't even like people saying female pilot. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm just a pilot. Um, and... Okay, I'll be totally real. Uh, through U.S. Airways, and I mean, I was hired at like 27 at U.S. Airways. I was young, and um, I didn't have a lot of, you know, I, I stand up for myself a lot more now than what I did then. But uh, I was always like, oh, I'm going to go in here. These guys don't want to fly with me. It was in the back of my head. They don't want to fly with me. They don't want to fly with me. I was in the crew room at Alaska Airlines, and there's a bunch of captains sitting there, and they were all talking about some FO. And they're like, blah, 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 you know, oh, he does this and everything, you know, and they were, and I was like, oh, I wonder who it is. And then I heard Tom, and I was like, are you kidding me? They're talking about a guy. Like, I thought for sure they were talking about a female FO. No. And I'm like, they don't like the guys as much as they like the girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl. It's if you're not a person of integrity and... Yeah. You're messing everything up. Totally. If yeah. you don't do your job or, you know, and we all have bad days, but it, it, it's not the male or fe female. It's, mm -hmm. are you a good pilot? Are you a good person? Do I want to hang out with you for four days? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that, but sadly, it, I mean, that was later in my career that I mm -hmm. figured that out. What would you say is the most rewarding aspect of your work that you get to do? Um, the last leg of a four day. <laughs> <laughs> to go home leg. <laughs> <No. laughs> um, uh, yeah, going home day. Uh, most rewarding. You know, um, I mean, honestly, that's kind of true because you've done four days of a lot of work, you know, and a lot of legs and things went, you know, I always say I don't want to be an instruction video, uh, like a, a video. We, we have training and then you end up being in a video because of, you did something Because you did something. Yeah, yeah. you did something you, horrible. You're the topic of the Yeah, yeah, like video. I don't want to be an instruction <laughs> video for training and I don't want to do an ASAP, so let's, you know. But um, 
honestly, when things go sideways, like you divert, like I just diverted on the 26th of February, but uh, of, of December, like a divert or maintenance issues and stuff like that. And when it all comes together, you know, you're working with maintenance and ramp and, and your flight attendants and you're all working as a team, you know, and you're getting things done. It, that is, um, that's a good day. You know, in the end, when you come home and you're like, okay, we did it. We got these people from point A to point B. And, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. I, uh, took them home from Christmas or took them to see their grandma or. Right, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. When you, and you got that, in there safely, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. That team, that team building is very, I can see how it's very rewarding. It is, it yeah. is, yeah. Yeah. Because when it doesn't work, it's not good. No. <laughs> the wheels start falling off. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. Yeah. And it's, I mean, sometimes you're just like, oh, you just want to, you know, if you can just get the jet off the jetway, like, come on, because then we're in control, <laughs> you know? So just getting it all together. Yeah. So big picture question that I sent you, and I don't know if you had to think about this one for a while. How do you see aviation as being part of God's plan for redeeming and restoring creation. And this is like coming from a big background thing that I've been thinking about, Um, but aviation is a tool. I see it as something God's given us and we should use it for good. So yeah, speak to that if you can. This is a doozer, by the way. Okay. <laughs> you like my question or is it make you think too hard? No, it's a good you question. You have to work for your lunch yeah. afterward. Yeah. Um, no, this, the, the, this, this oh. was um, very thought-provoking because, you know, it's like, well, are you looking at it like you're, you know, you, you pop out of the fog in Portland and poof, there's Mount Hood with this sun shining behind it and you're like, there's a God, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. Or is it, um, you know, you're bringing people all over the world to spread Jesus's good news, that kind of thing. I kind of came at it a little differently. Um, I'm a nuts and bolts kind of gal. And I kind of bring it back to just basic. And um, I think about all the people like we meet in aviation, mm-hmm. not the guy just sitting next to you. All these people, this diverse group of people, and um, you don't know where they're coming from. Um, I mean, we're all broken, right? And I look at uh, how, with a heart trusting God and a, and a heart that loves God and wants to do His work, how how does that? How, how does that play into my job? And, um, you know, it's being that listening ear to the, the guy sitting next to me who is getting a divorce, lost his house or whatever. Or um, right now, it's like the last guy I flew with, he just got off the last couple of trips because COVID is just raging through his family. Mm-hmm. And so it's um, being there for him and, you know, um, it's, the lady in the back who left her um, cane at the checkpoint and the CSAs come up and they're like, hey, uh, we think we found her cane, but um, we don't know, you know, we gotta run and get it, but, and I'm like, what, is, what are they trying to get at? And, and she's kind of hemming and hawing, I'm like, oh, I get it, you want me to take the delay. And I'm like, because they're like, yeah, they want to shut the door. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. Give me the delay. And then the the customer service agents are perfectly fine to do whatever. So like you have to accept responsibility for the delay. Yes. Okay. And you're not blaming the customer service. No, they're not getting any blame. And so they're happy to have any delay they want. The ding doesn't get against their performance. We get the ding. I'll take the delay. No no problem whatsoever. And so we get that lady her cane. And it's not a big thing, but to her it is, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Recently, there was a gentleman who was being pushed up the jetway in a wheelchair, had a U.S. veteran hat on, and the crew was all waiting, and I'm like, what's going on? And I'm in the back, and I can't really see because the jetway turns, and and, um, 
they're like, oh, I don't know, there's something with the wheelchair, so I kind of poke my head, and this wheelchair lady is making this frail man, I mean, he's frail, get out of the chair, and I'm like, what? He's like, not even halfway up the jetway, I'm like, what's going on? And um, so I walk up there, I'm like, what are you doing? And she goes, well, this isn't my person, this isn't my person, and I'm like, I don't care, you don't, you don't just push some elderly gentleman out of a wheelchair, like, just walk him up and then come back and get your person. She's like, no, 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 I can't do that, I can't do that. So I'm like, okay. So I run up, I go try to find a wheelchair. They're all tied, you know, locked down. And for, for one thing, I'm not saying this story so that it's me, but just how we can use our job. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but there was a, a straight back chair, which I don't know if you guys know what those are. They're the little skinny chairs that they can put you and roll you down the aisle. It's really skinny. That's all that was on the jetway. I grabbed it. I got the gentleman. I'm like, here, sit here. I'm like this, and you know, and it doesn't move very well and everything. And I'm like, I'm not even a professional, you know, wheelchair driver. So I'm like, but, um, and I pushed him up the, you know, and got him up there and he was getting off the plane. Yeah. I got him off the plane and, um, in, in a chair. And it's like, you know, that's being the hands of God, the hands and feet of God, like yeah. seeing those situations. And I don't know if that answers your question or not, but that's kind of how I, I, I saw it in that, um, you know, bringing Jesus to people, but in a very tactful Real, way. Real, tangible way. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I, I don't yeah. know, but um, you see stuff all the time. And, you know, you can walk, you can walk by, I mean, anybody. I mean, they... Um, and not answer their questions or, or whatever, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, to take the time or, you know, you see people, they don't have a clue where to go. He's lost in the airport. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. signs everywhere, people. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, where's D3? Right there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But I, I love that, that you have the platform that you can do that, you know, yeah. and, and if you're not out there being a professional aviator, you're not able to do that and you can see so many different people in and that way and just you don't get to tell them why you're helping them maybe but like you say being the hands and feet of Jesus to them and and looking for those opportunities mm-hmm. of where you can mm-hmm. do it and that at this stage in the game flying the jet is way down here mm-hmm. it's it's all this other stuff I mean nobody told and, and nobody looks as a pilot like you're a, a manager of a team right but that's my biggest job. But that's what your biggest calling really is. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Let's, let's get with some practical stuff. You said you like the nuts and bolts and stuff, right? So, so what advice would you give for these students? Don't Other give than, up. you know, being on time and wearing <laughs> nice pants and do your, know your stuff. And you got that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, don't give up. Um, I mean, you heard different things that happened it's an I mean if you I always say if it's in your blood like some of us it's in your blood like during COVID um I was like oh I'm gonna take six months off you know this would be awesome and then it's like ooh, you know I usually do three weeks vacation and I'm ready to come back you know (laughs) I I love my job um it's worth it you you do sacrifice a lot um time um, and that kind of stuff, being away from home, but then you're home, you're home. There's, so don't give up. And if you're struggling, attitude is everything. Um, pre- preparation and attitude. The aviation community, no matter where you're at, is gonna help. It doesn't matter if you're at Laterna University or if you're at Alaska Airlines. If you come in prepared and willing to learn with a great attitude, everybody's going to help you and you're going to succeed and i am proof of it yeah we just heard that you had trouble with vors oh, you I, just didn't give up i had trouble with everything I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I i meant to go in my logbook and write down how many landings i did before they let me f- solo i mean because <laughs> <laughs> i think i was the last person on everything oh. so um yeah i mean I, I struggled at everything and so um that would be um one thing um, aviation is a very, very small world, very small world. And um, you heard like I was at Great Lakes and then I went to US Air and I came to Alaska. Well, some people 
I flew with at Great Lakes. They, they were, when I was a captain, they were my first officer. At Alaska, I was their first officer. So they were pulling my gear, and then I was pulling their gear. So, um, you know, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Be nice, be kind. Um, one thing is, I, I was an FO for 12 years at Alaska Airlines because with uh, age 65, the 2008 downturn, I pulled gear and I built that box and you're a busy body. You are busy as a first officer. And it gives me a whole different perspective as a captain. You guys coming into this career right now, you're probably not gonna be an FO anywhere very long. You're gonna upgrade pretty quickly. And you need to think about what it's like to sit in that right seat and, and the hard work it is and um, keep the pace so that they can keep up, especially with new people. Anyway, that, see, I can get off on tangents. But anyway, um, uh, aviation is a small, small world. So um, you, you, you may not know that person, but um, yeah, keep your comments to yourself. Basically, it's, <laughs> it's super small. And... Um, I thought I had one other thing that I was like, oh, networking is huge. Because it's so small. Because it's so yeah. small. And um, there was a gal at Letourneau, I did, uh, at Alaska, and I didn't know her, but she had met another captain, and he's like, I don't know anything about being a girl. You talk to Heidi. And um, <laughs> she started talking to me, and she'd send me pictures of her kid, and I'm like, this is strange, and that kind of thing. But she just kept, you know, she just kept talking to me and just be like, you know, every once in a while, like, hey, Heidi, you know, I'm still trying to get on with Alaska, whatever. We're now, she's on with Alaska, we're friends. And, um, but because of that, I could actually say I know her and, you know, she could use me as a reference. But, you know, don't be afraid to um, bug people, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that you know. So um, networking is very, very important. Yeah, if I can make a plug for networking stuff um <clears throat> anywhere that you guys have opportunity to go someplace that you can network you should take it like you know i would not go to like air adventure at oshkosh without business cards you can hand out to people resumes and stuff like that um or any kind of a aviation trade show i don't know if you have you been to a women in aviation conference before ever mm -hmm. yeah so and that's for all the the ladies in here, we're doing a, we, we started Women's Aviation Society so we can bring s students to the conference so they can network. And um, we're taking applications now, so you guys should apply. Okay, we got a couple, we'd like to take some more. It's in Nashville this year, so it's oh, not, not close to you, but it's close to us, we're gonna drive. Yeah. So, oh, cool. Yeah, anyway, so there's a plug for that. But also I wanna talk about um, scholarships. They, like you say, the aviation industry wants to help. Mm -hmm. I see that a lot. Did you get any scholarships? along the way? I don't know what was around. Uh, the only thing I got was the Evelyn Letourneau $1,000, which oh, okay. everybody yeah, got. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I might have got something like that too. Um, yeah. Have you um, seen like, does Alaska give scholarships out at all? Do you know? We do, that was not on the question list. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I don't know about scholarships. We do internships. Internships. Yeah. Okay. Internships. And is, yeah. By the yeah. way, the internships, they're always you and day, you and D people. Come on. Doesn't <laughs> anybody want to come to Alaska? You guys should apply. Are you even applying? I don't know. Right? I understand. We're way up there. We're way far well, away. But Your headquarters um, is in Seattle. Yeah. So if anybody wants um, internship with Alaska, I mean, you get... I, I think you get ground school. It depends on where you are, but mm -hmm. like they'll put you what, through. What kind of internships do you know? Like what all they're um, doing? Some of them are working with like the chief pilot or the base chiefs. Oh, okay. okay. Um, some of them are, yeah. I mean, but you get jump seat privileges, I believe, and ground school. Okay. And, yeah. And your name gets in there. Yep. And you get to network with the people at Alaska, and then they're like, oh, yeah, that kid from Laterno, they were awesome. Yeah. They were way better than those other people. Totally. From some other place exactly. or whatever. So we should hire them, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so as far as, you know, scholarships, I want to make a plug for that too. You guys are going to be getting an email in, I think, end of this week, maybe next week, um, opening, telling you about scholarship applications for Laterno, scholarships unique to Laterno, which this did not exist when I was a student. This did not exist when you were a student. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, but we um, expect to have some scholarships to give away. So it's only for Laterno students. So cool. watch your emails, please, for that. We got a lot of great applications last year, and I'm expecting 
a bunch more this year. Uh, so some more maybe fun stuff. I had some fun questions on there. What's your favorite city to fly into and why? Um, maybe it's for the approach in or maybe it's for what you get to do on the layover there. Yeah, um, Juno is a lot of fun. Um, we do our, our RMP approaches in there. Okay. And um, it's, there's one side that you come down the channel and literally you're just between, like if it's IFR and you look at your screen, it's just orange and red and you're just- Like the terrain. Yeah, the about, terrain yeah. is, and so it's, it's- So you're following like a curving approach path. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, totally. Um, so that one is, and then if you come out the other, on the other side, you break out, you have to break out like way out far visual because you have to get through the cut and um, that is like, and then you kind of turn and then phew, come in and there's always wind sideways and it, it's a good challenge. Mm -hmm. um, the runway's a decent size length, so it's not that, but, um, but it's, it's just uh, the weather and I mean, turbulence, we have special, all kinds of different special things that um, tell us what the winds are going to be like there because of the, mm -hmm. but um, I'll be honest, I try not to fly Southeast Alaska because it's like five legs a day and it's so much work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I try not to go up there anymore if I don't have to. But, okay, but Juno would be your favorite. But Juno, it's, it's just so beautiful and yeah. And then on the layovers, it's great. You get good food and there's hiking and yeah. Do you get to, do you have enough seniority where you can kind of pick your routes much or not? Kind of, sort of. Mm -hmm. I, I pick days off and then okay. what I do at work, I do at work. Yeah. But um, I just stay away from the all-nighters and the Southeast is so much work. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say would be your favorite person in history to sit down, if you could go back and sit down with chat with somebody from history, who would that be? Um... Okay, so I read that question a little differently. Oh, and, okay. Um, I didn't, like, history. So um, I chose my grandpa de Coster. That's I, perfect. I didn't choose, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm probably supposed to pick Jesus. <laughs> Mary. Yeah, Mary. <laughs> Sorry. Amelia Earhart. I told you I'm Where did that. you go? What <laughs> happened? And now I'll come back and make a lot of money. <laughs> exactly. I love that. Your grandpa. Okay. Yeah. Tell, I, tell, us, tell me about So why. I didn't meet him. He okay. um, died of a massive heart attack at 45. Yeah. And so I just hear like all these stories about him. And um, like my sister remembers like people going, oh, you're Louie's granddaughter. Um, and he, w he was a lawyer by profession, but he was someone that like did adoptions for free. And if people couldn't pay him, you know, even in a, like the house that I grew up in, I'd be like, well, what's that from? It's like, well, somebody couldn't pay grandpa and so they gave him this chair, you know? And so, <laughs> you know, so we have like stuff like that. And so he's a man of like major integrity. Like he was super intelligent, but like super compassionate. Um, and so I would love to just get his viewpoint on life and um, be able to sit across the table from him and on like different situations in life and be like, what would you do? Why, and why would you do that? You know, mm -hmm. because I think he really lived out his faith and um, it was such an important part of his life and, and he really did it, you know? I mean, he had to put food on the table. Yeah. So that, uh, so yeah. Okay. Where, where would you take him to eat and what would you be eating? Or? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would either have Thai food um, or and I'll be honest, Kraft macaroni and cheese out of a box, but you only use half the noodles. I'm just saying. Oh. Mm -hmm. You only boil half the noodles. Only half the noodles, yeah. Oh, so it's like extra cheesy. Yeah. See, I never get macaroni and cheese. Or you could just I get another box cheese. and put it in both packets. You, you and could. then you have the same amount of noodles. That's true. You could, yeah. <laughs> but the, the, the key point is half the noodles, full so cheese. More cheese than noodles. <laughs> yeah. My kids would probably agree with that. Yeah. Because I try to make macaroni and cheese, all kinds of different recipes, and I'm like, I really like the one from the box. That's craft. really my favorite. And I'm like, okay. It's craft. Craft. <laughs> only craft. Yes. Okay. Not store brand. I love it. Oh, not store brand. Yeah. Either. No, oh, no, then no. I'm in trouble. No. Oh, okay. it has to be craft. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so what's the last, I believe in reading. I like to read. I don't know if you like to read. I didn't even ask when I asked you this question. Do you like to read? Nope. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> that this was a bad question. Maybe it's a uh, audio book. Do you do audio books? Nope. No. Okay. No. All right. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Podcasts. Okay. But, well, I do too. 
I love podcasts. But here's the thing. Okay. Um, we didn't even ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to tell you. I was like, no, um, this is a I really bad question. Be. And I thought, no. <laughs> because, you know, in reality, my friends say I'm people over pages. Like, I... I will do anything, even if I don't want to do it, just to be with people and to hang out with people or be with friends or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm people over pages. Okay. I have a stack of books about this high by my bed that are like all half read. <laughs> and, and I have read books, it's not that. Yeah. But um, honestly, yeah, it's the flight ops manual because I just went through training in December. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the question was, that, what's the last book you read? Yeah. Uh, the flight ops manual. Yeah. Okay, got to stay in the books. Okay, so well, so what's your favorite podcast then that you like to listen to? I don't know. You don't want to say? Well, uh -oh. they're they're all political. Oh. <laughs> so I'm not sure okay. Should. So yeah, it, it's just staying informed with what's going on in the world. world. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Awesome.